What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's game week preview time for game week 24. There is a Tuesday evening deadline, right? The video is going out today. The deadline is today. Do not forget. So we're going to cover a few things in here like defenders uh, to bring in. A lot of people are looking at defenders this week from the questions that I was asked. We're looking at the latest Salah news, captaincy, and a bunch of your questions as well. So if you enjoy it, make sure to give it a like. Hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. If you want to check out my 888 sports article as well that i've written for this week there is a link in the description below otherwise let's jump into it all right let's talk about the latest salah news all right if we can call this news so it came out yesterday um so this was on monday that it was tweeted salah has told liverpool he'll return to training tomorrow so that's on tuesday when the deadline is uh, and he wants to throw himself back into club football. There was another quote that came out from another um, kind of journalist that covers Liverpool. I think it was Paul Joyce who said that um, Salah is ready to play against Leicester, right? He wants to play against Leicester. So I say this is like news because Klopp already said last week that he expects Salah and Mane, but kind of more like whoever lost the final back on Tuesday or Wednesday. Salah's going to be back on Tuesday training. It's exactly what Klopp said. And that they'd be available for Leicester. Salah wants to play against Leicester. Klopp Klopp said he'd be available. So this hasn't really changed too much, right? I said yesterday on the team selection video, there's kind of two schools of thoughts for me, right? One is he's played for 120 minutes, right? That's a long, uh, a large amount of football in a short space of time. I know a lot of people are saying, well, it's not the same intensity as the Premier League. The ball was out of play for a lot of it. He didn't really do much running anyway. I get it, but it's still a lot of football, right? And then there's obviously the mental side as well. Now, fair enough, right? Salah wants to come back and play. It doesn't necessarily mean that's the best thing for him perhaps it is perhaps that's the best way to deal with it but ultimately he is not going to decide whether he plays the club is going to decide Klopp is going to decide there was an article last year on the athletic about how it might have even been two years ago now of how and maybe Liverpool have changed right I don't know there's not been an updated article that I've seen um, it's all about the red zone right so they take into account like players fitness levels and stuff like that and then decide if they can play so he might get back to Liverpool all the all the football he's done maybe that's helped keep up the momentum and Liverpool might say fair enough you're starting but if you said to me I'll give you a hundred quid if you guess right whether he starts or not I think I would still guess bench okay I still think there's enough there to not have to bring him in and I would say to anyone that's got him of course you're going to play him why wouldn't you but are any of you actually going to captain him probably not and if you're not going to captain him deep down that tells you that you don't think he's a guaranteed to start because if you thought he was guaranteed to start against a lesser defense which is awful Surely you'd captain him. So I still think there's reason not to go for him this week. If anything, I'm more worried about game week 25, right? Not owning him against Burnley because Burnley defense isn't great either. But obviously I'm kind of feeling a little bit more kind of relaxed about that because obviously a lot of us are going to captain Man United players anyway, either Fernandez or Ronaldo, which we'll talk about um, next week. So I don't think this really changes, right? If you thought he was going to start anyway, this shouldn't really change your mind. If you thought he wasn't going to start, this probably shouldn't change your mind either. Um, they've got enough players to kind of cover him. They've obviously been doing well without and winning games. So I don't think it's a necessity that he comes back in. Personally, I think he'll be benched and he'll come off the bench and he could do something, of course. But that's not enough for me to bring him in when I'm not going to captain him this week. So let me know in the comments below. Do you think Salah is going to start or do you think he's going to be benched? All right, so I want to cover defenders, right? And I've got the fixtures for a bunch of teams from game week 24 to 28. The teams I've selected are the teams that most people are looking for defenders from. And I just put Luca Dean because I think if you're buying an Aston Villa defender, he is probably the one to buy, right? You're not really looking... Um, at anyone else now this time of year is great because you get lots of blanks lots of doubles even more so this year right there's going to be very few normal game weeks for the rest of the season and i say normal where every team is playing each other just once right so there's going to be a lot of blanks a lot of doubles the problem for doing content and ask answering questions like who is the best defender to bring in for my chelsea defender is it's very cliche but it's much more relevant at this time of the season it is going to depend on your team and it is going to depend on your strategy right if you're free hitting in game week 27 the defender you bring in might be slightly different than if you're free hitting in game week 30 if you're free hitting in both again it could be different again etc etc so i'm going to try and talk through the different options and why they might be good for one strategy or might be good for another one or whether they're just good options in general right so i've put liverpool down i'm assuming that most people have got 
Trent, if you haven't got a third Liverpool player outside of Salah, right? Because you really need Salah for game week 26. Let's let's be honest about it. The second one is Trent. So if you're going for a third option, Robertson is obviously the defender you go for. You could go for Van Dijk and save a little bit of money. You could go for Matip and save a lot of money and hope that he starts twice in the double. But I think it's a bit of a risk. So Robertson's the one to go for. Only downside really is his cost. Obviously, compared to Trent, it's a lot cheaper. But compared to other defenders, it's quite a lot of money. So can you afford that? Um, I, I think Leicester is a fairly tricky game to keep a clean sheet. Like Leicester are really bad in defence, but they're not that bad going forward. But outside of that, Burnley is a great uh, fixture. Norwich and Leeds at home is a great fixture for Liverpool as well. So defence looks pretty good. And then you've got West Ham onwards. But Liverpool defence is so good that there could be clean sheets along the way and attacking returns. But obviously, he doesn't play in game week 27. Now, if you've only got three Liverpool players and no Arsenal players, I've not even written Arsenal up here because they could be on there as well, um, then you can probably get through game week 27 without a free hit and so it's not too bad but if you've got lots of Arsenal players maybe even a Leicester player in there and lots of Liverpool players you need to decide if you're free hitting in 27 I'm not saying that it's a reason not to bring him in but it's just something to think about so I really like Robertson as an option we shouldn't forget about Man City they haven't got a double but they also don't blank in game week 27 where they play Everton away and to be honest Brentford Norwich Spurs Everton away and uh, Man United at home as well there's not too many games there where you necessarily fear the clean sheet going. So obviously Cancelo's the top option, but you could even bring in a second one. I still think I'd go for Laporte over Diaz. I don't know. I'm not I don't know if I'm hundred percent sure that Laporte's minutes are as good as Diaz is, but they look like they are right now. And he is a bit cheaper as well. You save half a million. And I, th I think his goal threat's better as well. If you watch him from corners and free kicks, I'd always put my money on Laporte scoring over Diaz. So I do like Laporte as an option. I think you've got a few clean sheets over the next week, a uh, couple of weeks. And obviously as well, you have got transfers before the doubles and before the blanks as well. So anyone you bring in, you don't have to keep long term. You don't want to get caught in a trap where you're bringing in a player for like four or five weeks time. You don't get any points in the meantime. And then they don't get you any points in the blank or the double anyway. So I do think... Man City are pretty good. The problem with Man United defence is the fixtures are good. The defence isn't necessarily that good. I do think it has improved un under Ranić, and I don't think they're going to get battered in any of these games or anything. But how many clean sheets will they get is tricky. I think Burnley is fine. I think there's at least one clean sheet in Southampton and Brighton as well. Leeds is tricky. Watford at home could be a clean sheet there. So I think the clean sheet potential is okay. The problem is which defender do you buy? Dallow, I spoke about yesterday. I still like him. I do think he's first choice. Um, but I don't think that makes him 100% nailed. So will he start both games in the double? There has to be some doubt there. wan could start one of the games. Tellez, I think, has tested positive for COVID. So he's going to miss Burnley and probably Southampton as well. The problem is, will he miss Brighton? And will Shaw have done enough to keep himself in the team without Tellers coming back in? And the Solskjaer, Shaw always played. But Ranić likes the more attacking ability from his fullbacks. And he has said that he prefers... Not prefers, sorry, but he knows that Tellers is a better attacker than Luke Shaw. Even though I think Shaw's pretty good. I, I don't really know what the issue is. But there is obviously a doubt that then he would then play all the games as well. So then you're going to like Varane and Maguire and they're quite expensive and the amount of goal threat they offer is not necessarily that high. So I think for most people, you're probably avoiding Man United. The only thing I would say is that Watford at home game is in game week 27. So if you're not free hitting, it wouldn't be that bad to have a defender that week. So if you've got the money, Harry Maguire might be an option because I think he's got a bit more goal threat than Varane. And then Dallow and Shaw, you could go for, but you, you have to buy them knowing that there's a risk there. Um, Spurs are a team I'm really interested in. And I've got to be honest, I spoke yesterday about Dallow. I'm trying to rework my transfers right now, just to give you some insight into my own thoughts. I really like the look of Regulon. Um, a 5.4 million. Hopefully, he would start most of these games and not get rotated. I think Southampton and Wolves look really good for clean sheets. I know that the double has Man City, but Burnley could be a clean sheet as well. Leeds is a bit trickier, but they do play in 27. And in 28, they've got Everton at home as well. So as a span of five fixtures, Regulon looks really good. You could go for Dyer or Davies if you wanted to save a bit of money, but I like Regulon. Wolves, a lot of people are looking at Aint Nuri. Um, I don't mind him. And I, I know why. They've got a double. They play in 27 and they play in 30. So if you're trying to save chips, he's a good option. And he's cheap, right? So he's a really good enabler. But realistically, I don't see a huge amount of clean sheets. I know Wolves' defense is pretty good. But Arsenal is tricky. Spurs is tricky. Leicester and Arsenal again then in the double is a bit tricky. West Ham away, like Bowen Antonio, is tricky. 
I don't know. Wolves don't concede a huge amount of goals, and their defence is fairly decent. So they could get a couple of clean sheets along the way, but I just don't know if now is the time to buy them, really. If, if you can you know, make better use of a different defender um, with better shorter-term fixtures, especially if you're like free-hitting in game week 30 or something like that. So I don't mind Nate Nuri, but I, I don't think he's a fantastic... You're not going to want to play him too often. So if he's on your bench, fine. But if you have to play him a lot, not so fine. Um, I quite like Brighton defenders. There's a lot of defenders I like. I'm trying to run through the pros and cons quick as I can. They obviously blank this week. They got a double in game week 25, but it is two away games. But then it's Burnley, Villa, and Newcastle. So the fixtures aren't that bad afterwards. They play in 27. Villa at home is okay. 28 fixture is decent too. I think Brighton are okay. Yes, you don't get the double in 26, but you get it in 25. But obviously, if you're bringing them in this week, you don't get a fixture. So if, if you need them to play this week, they're no good. So Cucurella is probably the, the most nailed attacking player in the team. Webster is also a bit of a cheaper option who should be nailed on as well if you wanted to go for him and have a bit more of a kind of enabler as well. And then Luca Dean, let's not forget about him. Fixtures are really good. No double, but doesn't blank in 27. I mean... If you're comparing him to Aiton Uri, I know there's a big price difference, right? Don't get me wrong. I could just say, just get Robertson, right? Versus Aiton Uri. There's like a 3 million difference. But if you can afford it, I think he gets more clean sheets and probably is a better attacker and even maybe slightly more nailed on than someone like Aiton Uri. So it all depends what you can afford and what your chip plans are, right? Like I said, Villa playing game week 27 and they play in game week 30. The only issue with Villa is that they don't have a double. But outside of that, they've got so many good fixtures, they could get more points than a lot of players that have got doubles anyway. So just really quickly to summarize, so I know this section's been really long. Robertson, great. Man City's okay. There's risks with Man United. I really like Regadon, and I really like Luca Dean as well. The only thing with Brighton is no fixture this week, so you're bringing in a dud player, but they got a double next week. I just... I don't know. I think I think they'll do okay, but I think Luca Dean, Regadon, and Robertson are definitely the standouts here. And if you want to go a bit cheaper, eight euro, you could possibly go for Ben White or Tierney at Arsenal as well. But bear in mind they blank in twenty five and twenty seven. Let me know in the comments below which defender are you bringing in. Okay, there's a lot of captaincy options this week, right? People have got a lot of different players in their teams. I don't own Kane. I don't own De Bruyne. I don't own Son, for example. I do have Jota, Bowen, uh, and Foden and Ronaldo, right? So there's there's not really I wouldn't say there's a standout, but I do have my opinions on who's the best and what kind of pros and cons there are to all these players. So I'm going to try and go through as quickly as possible. I will say I think Kane is the standout because there are some players on this list that I do... I think I think pretty much every single player on this list will start this week. But some players will have their minutes managed or, or at least at risk of having their minutes managed, i.e. being subbed off early. Possibly Jota, possibly Foden, for example. Whereas Kane, you're pretty much sure he's going to get to 90 minutes. He's definitely going to start. He's on penalties as well. And Southampton just feels like one of those teams where there'll be a few goals for Spurs. I think he has improved under Conte. He is shooting more. That could be Conte. It could be that he's getting fitter. It could be that he's forgetting about what happened over the summer. It could be a combination of all those things. But I think Kane is looking good. I spoke about him last week as well, that he is or has so far this season underperformed his expected goals. I know some people don't like stats, etc. But some people, that at some point, that's going to catch up, right? And he's going to start banging in a few goals. Uh, and if there wasn't a double for Man United, I would definitely rather have Kane in my team right now than I would for Ronaldo. So I think Kane is the standout. With Ronaldo, right, I don't think you should ever write him off. Same with Fernandes as well. There's just no space to put Fernandes on the screen. Um, but I still don't know and I know the irony here is that I'm definitely going to captain a Man United player next week but I'm still not 100% sure about what Man United team is going to show up we can take some stuff away from Middlesbrough like Man United played well they shouldn't have lost that game they created a lot of chances but obviously that's not a Premier League team right so I don't think Man United this week at uh, Burnley away is that bad but I, I just, I've got Ronaldo, and I've got to be honest, he's like fourth or fifth in the pecking order for captaincy for me this week. De Bruyne, again, I think is another one of the standouts. I think Brentford at home is the kind of fixture that Man City will probably score quite a few goals in. They do have a quick turnaround to Norwich, and then Champions League and stuff is starting back up soon as well. So again, he could have his minutes managed. Um, but I don't think that would put me off. And if I had De Bruyne and I didn't have Kane, he'd probably be right at the top of my list. Because out of all Man City players, he's one of the ones you don't really worry too often, at least, 
about him starting. Son obviously played in the FA Cup, so he's back. If you've got him over Kane, the same thing applies to the fixture. I do think it's a game where Spurs will score well. I think they're looking good under Conte uh, in defence and in attack, to be honest. I think he, he, like, he's such a good manager. He's just improved them so quickly. Um, so I don't think Son's a bad option, but I'm just going to assume that a lot of people don't own him. And then you've got the three that I'm considering between, between uh, Bowen, Jota, and Foden. Now, I've been on Bowen for a long time, like ever since basically the last game week passed and I was able to change my team for game week 24. I put it on Bowen and obviously I was waiting to see if Salah was going to lose any games in, in the African Cup of Nations. I don't think he's going to necessarily start, so I'm not looking to bring him into captain. So Bowen it's been on because Watford have been poor. Now, there's obviously some talk now that Hodgson is in. He'll make them better defensively. I don't want to take too much away from Watford's game against Burnley because Burnley just weren't great, right? They didn't really uh, trouble Watford too much. And I just think West Ham are a lot better, especially in attack, than Burnley. So I do think Bowen is a good option. It's at home. He's played really well this season. The only thing is, he did play 100... I think he played all the minutes in the FA Cup game. So he's just played 120 minutes. That was after a bit of a break, I might add. But obviously, it's not ideal, right? It would have been better for him to come off a little bit earlier. So I do really like Bowen, but I wonder if this is an opportunity to just captain Jota against one of the worst defences in the league, right? If you look at the bottom five expected goals conceded, Leicester are the third worst team so far this season. This isn't a blip. This has been happening all year. Yes, they've been missing some key defenders. Well, guess what? They are still missing them. Evans is out. Fafana's out. They're not going to be back this week, I don't think. Uh, and indeed, and, and Tienemans, they were all playing in the FA Cup when they conceded four to Forest. Like, Leicester right now are not a good defence, and it doesn't look like Rodgers is going to change that anytime soon. And, uh, and to be honest, the comments he came out with the other day that some of the players have just done their most at Leicester like it just didn't sound good it's almost like the wheels are coming off a little bit so I do think Liverpool will score in that game I think they were a little bit unlucky not to score in the last time they played them and Jota's underlying numbers his expected goal involvement per 90 is absolutely insane I know people get frustrated with him missing big chances and stuff but his goal threat is so good and there's no reason why he couldn't put a couple of goals past Leicester so I'm very tempted to switch from Bowen to Jota now outside of that if you think Foden is going to start which I think he probably will then he also looks like a good option against Brentford. But I just know if they're cruising and he hasn't been involved with the goals, he, he is one of the first names that will get brought off alongside Cancelo. And to be honest, maybe De Bruyne as well, because Pep wants to play them regularly in future games. So if they're winning by a lot, they're, they're the kind of players that are susceptible to come off um, first. So if I had Kane, I think it would be him. If I had De Bruyne, he'd be quite up there as well. And then really a lot of people are in Bowen and Jota, I'm on Bowen, but I'm very tempted to switch to Jota. Let me know below who you're thinking of going for. All right, I'll try and get through some of your questions a little bit quicker. So if you could go for just one of Fernandez or Ronaldo for game week 24 to 25, who would you get? So you got Burnley away this week, then you got a double of Southampton and Brighton. And yes, I would definitely captain a Man United attacker, one of these two, next week. Okay, we won't get into differentials like Rashford and Sancho right now. Um, this is a tough one for me because deep down, I've got Ronaldo... And I still think he's an okay option, right? I don't... I'm not worried about him, I would say. I know that Man United have not necessarily looked great at all times recently. I know Ronaldo hasn't necessarily looked great. But I do think he plays all three of these games. I think he'll start all three of them. There has to... I mean... Lingard and Cavani are back now, right? Now, whether they're ready to start straight away, especially Cavani, I'm not sure... But he could start, I guess, one of the games in game week 25. A very outside chance. So maybe minutes-wise, there is slightly more risk with Ronaldo than there is with Fernandez. But I just think it's very easy just to completely write Ronaldo off because he's not scored recently. And then just sit here and say, well, I think Fernandez is the best because he has scored recently. What I will say is, Man United have switched formation, right? That's very clear to see, right? It's been a few matches now. Ranić ditched the 4-2-2-2. It's more like a 4-3-3. And Fernandez has looked better, right? And he should have scored against Middlesbrough he had a really good chance I don't know how he missed it so I think it, oh, I, I don't want to like cop out by saying you know it depends on your structure but, like if you were building a team this week I've looked at wild cards I think it's easier to fit in a bunch of cheap midfielders than it is forward so I'd probably just go for Ronaldo um, but right now because I don't think there's a huge amount of difference between them and I think Fernandez will be lower owned I'd maybe just go for that differential. I'm very tempted, even though I own Ronaldo, to bring in Fernandez next week. But there is still a doubt in my mind about whether I would switch captaincy. So subconsciously, that is telling me 
that I still think Ronaldo is a good option. So if I was bringing one in right now, maybe just based on the last few games, I would go for Fernandez. But if you've got Ronaldo, I wouldn't be looking to actively get rid of him, especially if it's just a swap between the two. Who thought we'd be comparing Antonio versus Veghorst at this stage of the season? But look, Veghorst is in the league now, so we've got to do that. So is the question is, is Veghorst a better option than Antonio? Now that kind of depends, right? Because if you're on a wild card, I would be tempted to go for Veghorst. He's cheaper. You know he's got a double in 26. There's a good chance that he's going to double in game week 27 as well. It's also worth noting that Antonio is flagged this week. Moyes basically said he's come back from international duty. He has trained a couple of times. And then he said, hopefully he'll be fit. And obviously that's made uh, FPL put a flag on him. For what it's worth, I own him and I'm not too worried. I think that he's going to start. Right? If he's come back from international duty, didn't pick up an injury from what Moyes has said. He's been trained it's just that he didn't get back till late he's probably going to be fine for playing this week hopefully anyway i think the game is on yes today uh quarter to eight so hopefully it'll be okay hopefully we'll get some kind of early team news um but and, and to be honest the next couple of fixtures for west ham watford at home leicester away and newcastle at home are all pretty good but obviously the newcastle at home game is in 26 when veghorst has a double so if i was on a wild card i probably would go for veghorst to be honest if i've got antonio which i do I'm probably going to keep for the next two games because Veghorst plays Man United and then Liverpool. So unless you need the money, I don't really see a reason to switch, right? West Ham are just a better attack. And Tony, obviously, we know is a really good option, even though I know he hasn't scored recently, but you'd hope you can find some of that form from early on in the season. But I am looking to make the switch myself in game week 26 because at that point, if West Ham beats Southampton in the FA Cup, then... Antonio will play Newcastle at home in 26 and then he'll blank in 27. Whereas Veghorst, so that's one fixture. And even if Southampton beat West Ham, West Ham will only play twice anyway, just like a normal game week. Whereas Veghorst could play four times in that same space of time. So I think it depends when you're making the switch, right? We could talk about buying and selling. Like I'm not saying you should buy Antonio right now, but I don't think you should sell him either if you own him. But you could make that switch closer to game week 26. And if you're on a wild card, I probably would just go with Veghorst right now. All right, this is a good question, very relevant at the moment. In a time of lots of fixtures, do you believe aggressive transfers could gain an advantage taking hits to chase immediate upside of transfers rather than plan ahead? So first of all, don't just stop planning ahead. I, I think that's more relevant now than it was a few weeks ago because one, we're starting to get a gauge of what's going to happen with blanks and doubles, but also I think the amount of postponements we're going to get, especially the, like the last minute postponements, I really think is going to slow down. There's new rules from the Premier League, and in general, like there just feels like there's a bit less talk about kind of COVID and stuff right now. I don't know if that's true or not. Maybe it's different in the UK, right? I live in Ireland, but it just feels like. It's just becoming less and less chat right now. I'm not saying it's not going to happen again. And this happened last year. There was a few postponements. People worried about planning ahead. And then the postponements just stopped. So I'm not really worried about that. You should still plan ahead. Are aggressive transfers worth it? Yes, they can be. This is the same for hits at any time during the season, to be honest. I do. I Yeah, I'm happier, I would say taking a hit for a double game week player because even if it's not logical it just feels like you're buying a ticket to the lottery right you're trying to you're trying to increase your luck again that's not a logical thing to say i realize that but if you've got two stabs at the cherry right two games it feels like there's a more chance of that hit being repaid now obviously right one thing i would say is make think of every transfer as costing four points so if you're trying to bring in a defender for a double game week right and you're only really bringing them in for that double then that kind of, that four points pretty much knocks off one of the clean sheets anyway. So then you're hoping for bonus and attacking returns. And if you're going to bring a player in and then get rid of them straight away, and they're not really a captain, they don't really have good fixtures, then that's two transfers. That's probably not worth it. That's probably being too aggressive with very little upside. What I would say is, if there's a player that you may maybe there's like there's two players in a double game week or something like that or even a blank game week maybe it's close for captaincy and you know that one of them is going to be more heavily captain because just more people own them so they're not going to bother selling them right again i've already spoken about it a lot but like the ronaldo versus fernandez in game week 25 if you think that the other player 
is worth trying to bring in for a hit and captain. So you're kind of going against the crowd by bringing in a different player for a hit and also going against it with captaincy. And you're, you're happy to take that kind of risk, that differential risk. That could be worth it as well. So again, without trying to sit on the fence, this is always going to depend on a transfer, right? Do I think it's worth a hit to bring in a Brighton defender for game week 24, uh, 25? No, probably not. Do I think it's maybe worth taking a hit to bring in Fernandez or maybe, I don't know, a Martinelli or in 26 or obviously, or an extra Spurs attacker, even though they have Man City, but then they've got good fixtures afterwards, maybe that's worth it. So I am planning to take a few hits over the next few weeks to manage this this fixture congestion. So yeah, I think the, the ultimate answer to the question is yes, but not for all players, but definitely more so for attackers, especially if captaincy is coming into play as well. So there we go. Hopefully that was useful. I know there were some quite long sections, but there was a lot of talk about from the kind of questions that we got. And also I wanted to get through some of your questions at the end. I will be doing a deadline stream tonight. I'm not sure exactly when it's going to start, at least an hour before the deadline, but probably a little bit long. Because I'm going to say there's a lot of questions of all the blanks and doubles. So I'll try and do as much as I can later on. If you enjoyed this one, give it a like and hit that subscribe button. And I will be back later on to see you into the Game Week 24 deadline. And we can finally look ahead to Game Week 25 as well, which is very close around the corner. I'll catch you soon.